In this video series, we're going to look at stretching the answers to functional and wordy questions in GCSE Maths. These are the questions that generally carry higher marks and are poorly answered by the pupils sitting the exam. This is your opportunity to pick up many marks that other candidates are going to drop. Most of the maths involved in these questions is relatively straightforward. It's the wordiness and the hidden maths that cause the problems. What I've done is written a number of questions that we're going to look at step by step and structuring a clear answer that will convince the examiner to give us the maximum marks. Not all of the questions that I've written would appear on an exam question. Some are just simply looking at misconceptions in maths but others will be those really functional questions, such as area problems and the cost of tiling, for example. What we're going to do is break them down and write them out step by step. Often students have a good go at these questions, but end up with workings like this on the page. Once it might be right, it's incredibly hard to follow and doesn't really push the examiner to say, I want to read through this. So that's what we're going to do. Now, when you answer these questions, quite clearly, there are lots of different ways that they can be done. So if you watch a video and say, well, I did it a different way, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're showing full workings and you have a good structure to the question that is going to give you now the answer that will give you the four, five or six marks that are on offer. In this video, we're going to start with the first question. If you want a copy of the questions, they're all at the website here and I've put them in PDF form and I've also put on a help sheet. I'm going to build more up over time, but what we'll look to do is work through a few of these. So let's start with the first one. Now, this one wouldn't necessarily be on an exam, but it's going to give us some good ideas on how to structure these questions. So it's question number one. Paul calculates the sum of the numbers from one to five. He then calculates the product of the numbers from 1 to 5. In part A for one mark, we're asked to write down what the words sum and product mean. So all I'm going to do quite clearly in the space provided on the exam paper is write A. I'm going to write the, sum, the word sum. Sum means add. So all I'm going to do is simply write this. So if I wanted to sum the numbers from 10 to 12, I would add 10 to 11, to 12. I'm now going to write product. So product means multiply. So this is nice and clear. The examiner can read it and I've written it down. So product means multiply. We would now move on to part B. The reason I've included that is purely based on the fact that if we're happy with these words, maths can become slightly easier. It's the same. What's the difference between Difference mathematically means subtract. Sum means add. Product means multiply. In part B, we're asked to find the difference between the sum of the numbers from 1 to 5 and the product of the numbers from 1 to 5. So this question carries three marks. I'm saying to myself now, how can I write three marks worth of workings and an answer to convince the examiner to give me three marks? So if we think about now the difference, that's a word I introduce here, the difference means subtract. So let's go ahead and write the sum. The sum will be now the, uh, the numbers from 1 to 5. So it'll be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So if we add these up, we're going to get now 15. Next line, I'm going to write the product. So this is nice and clear to the examiner that this will be 1 times by 2 times by 3 times by 4 times by 5 and that's going to give me 2 times by 3 times by 4 times by 5 will give me 120. On the next line I'm simply going to write the difference. The difference is going to mean I subtract the 2. So difference we will have 120 minus the 15 which is going to give us now 105. And just clearly showing my answer here, I'm going to now get the marks. So we'd have one mark here, one mark here, and one mark here. Now in terms of the mark allocation, I've not given all of these massively accurate. 
I'm just looking at the amount of work we would need to do to score maximum marks. That would be typical of a three mark question. We've shown the sum quite clearly, we've shown the product, and then we've written the difference. Okay, let's move on to part C. So nice and clear on my exam paper, I'm going to write C. So the examiner's following this nice and straightforward, tick, 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 and wants to move on with his day or her day. Paul says the difference between the sum and the product of the numbers 1 to 5 is more than 10% of 1100. Is he correct? You must explain your answer showing your working. The first thing I'm going to write down now is 10% of 1100. So we can say 10% of 1100, and just jotting this down, 10% of 1100 is going to give me 110 for which I would get one mark. 10% I'm simply dividing by 10. Now, Paul, and we have to get this right, we have to answer the question. Lots of students put this down and they get one mark. They don't go on to answer the question. He is saying it now that the difference between the sum and product is more than 10%. We can see that 110 is greater than 105. And at this stage, I'm going to just use a symbol. You certainly don't have to use this. That means therefore. It makes our work slightly easier to read and write and we don't waste a lot of time. Therefore we have to make the conclusion. We can say that he is wrong. Okay so therefore Paul is wrong. So Paul is wrong. We've got now the difference between them is 105 10% of 1100 is 110, 110 is greater than 105, or you could say that it's less than, in any words, you can say 105 is less than, so just writing this down, less than 110, so less than 110, therefore Paul is wrong, so just writing this down, therefore Paul is wrong. So all we've done is just structured this nice and clearly. I like this mathematically as my answer, but this would be perfectly fine. So all we would get now is one mark for working out the 10%, and we get one mark for answering the question. That is the type of question that often doesn't get four marks, yet the maths is incredibly easy. We've just got to pull out what we're being asked. So there we go, that's the first of the questions done from the booklet. As stated, it's unlikely to come up in an exam, but it gives us some idea of some nice, clear structure. In the next video, we'll move on to question two and look at something that's probably more functional and wordy and more likely to be in an exam paper.